Solder. It's a bit of a dirty word in the world of motorsport wiring and as a rule we do our best to never use it. But of course for every rule there's always an exception. I'm Andre from HPA and we make online training courses to help you make your car faster. The reason we avoid solder in a motorsport harness is that the solder joint can be prone to failing from vibration and movement. Now that's not to say it will fail, but it's more likely to fail than a properly crimped terminal under the same conditions. Now I know what you're going to say, but Andre, I soldered a wire on my stereo back in 1995 and it's still going just fine, so obviously solder isn't an issue. Well, yeah, see my comment above. That's not to say it will fail, but you're adding a potential failure point that can be avoided. The problem is that when the solder joint is exposed to vibrational movement, the joint can work harden and fail. The sort of failure is also hidden by the outer insulation so you won't be able to see it, and to make matters worse it's likely to cause an intermittent fault that can be really tricky and frustrating to diagnose and solve. However, we also often come across actuators like this Toyota ignition coil where the factory connector is known to be unreliable in motorsport use due to the high level of vibration encountered. This can result in the terminals not correctly contacting the pins in the coil and this will result in misfires. So how do we fix this? Well, with solder of course. But we do use a variety of techniques to ensure reliability. Remember it's vibration and movement that are the enemy to a soldered joint, so we need to ensure we remove this risk and we do this by potting the coil. This technique can also be used for sensors or actuators where you can't source a replacement connector. The process starts by stripping the insulation from our Tefsil wire. We're using a pair of ideal Ergo Elite strippers with a backstop and this makes it super easy to get nice consistent strip lengths. Next we're going to bend the wire back on itself. We're doing this because the next step is to tin the conductors with solder and that will tend to wick up the wire. If we bent the conductors after the tinning process we'd be creating a strain point at the bend. Now we're going to use a soldering iron to tin the wire and the terminal ensuring we don't apply excessive heat to the coil terminal. Next we can insert the wire into the coil body and solder it to the terminal making sure we've got a good strong connection. Of course we repeat this for the remaining two conductors. Now if you're wondering why I've missed one of the four terminals that's because Toyota use a feedback connection to the factory ECU that's used for misfire detection but we're not using that with an aftermarket ECU. Now we can twist our three conductors together and apply a length of DR25 sheathing which we can recover onto the wires using a heat gun. This will provide abrasion resistance as well as resistance to liquids and chemicals. Before we carry on I'm going to abrade the end of the DR25 lightly with sandpaper so that the epoxy we're about to inject can make a good strong bond to the DR25. Once it's abraded we need to clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. The last step before we start mixing some epoxy is to arrange our wires neatly. I like to loop the wires back inside the connector body for further strain relief and ensure that they're coming out in the correct orientation. A piece of TIG filler rod and a cable tie can make this nice and easy and this will support the wires while the epoxy sets up. Now we can mix up some epoxy and the standard for motorsport wiring is the Resintech RT125 or Hallerman Titan V9500. While you can purchase mixing tubes for the epoxy, for smaller jobs I tend to just mix it manually and then apply it into a syringe. We can now start filling the back of the coil using the syringe and we start filling from the bottom and ensure that we don't end up with any air bubbles. Once the epoxy has been applied we need to leave it for 24 hours in order to dry. We've now got a coil that's potted and should actually be really reliable just like this. However we're going to add one last step which is to apply a moulded boot. You'll have probably seen these used extensively in professional motorsport harnesses for sealing the back of autosport connectors and the like. These are recovered onto the connector using a heat gun and once they've cooled they're essentially rigid providing another layer of strain relief. This particular boot is also glue lined meaning it will bond to the DR25 and the coil providing protection from dust, dirt and moisture. In order to provide a uniform shape for the boot to recover onto I'm using a power file to just remove any little protrusions on the coil. We can also take the opportunity to again abrade the DR25 and once this is complete we'll clean all of those surfaces down with isopropyl alcohol. Now we can install the boot and recover it with our heat gun. 
This does require a little patience and care to ensure that we recover the boot evenly and completely without applying excessive heat to the coil. And it should go without saying, but heat guns are in fact hot, so a little PPE here goes a long way to prevent a nasty burn. Lastly, I'm just applying another small bead of epoxy around the intersection of the boot and the DR25. We now have a complete potted coil that we can terminate to a reliable connector of our choice. Most likely an Autosport connector, or perhaps a Deutsch DTM if the budget won't stretch that far. This process may seem complex, but it's something anyone can do at home. This process is covered in detail in the Professional Motorsport Wiring course, and we explain everything in an easy to follow fashion that you can replicate at home in your garage. Making a professional level wiring harness for your car is not as hard as you think, and we can teach you how. You can sign up and start taking the Professional Motorsport Wiring course today. And if you don't need a professional level harness for your car, or maybe you've never touched a wire or a crimp tool before, we've got courses available for all experience levels, so we've got you covered. Click the link in the description to lift your wiring game today. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.